One, two. Follow me. He's alive, amen. He's alive, amen. He's alive, amen. Amen. Come on. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and just thank Him. Father, we love you. We thank you for everything that you did for us at Calvary, God. We've come into this place to worship you because you deserve our worship. You alone are victorious and we stand victorious because of all that you've done. So we love you, God, and we give you all the glory for what you're going to do right here, right now. In your holy name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Just hold on one second here quickly. Just, just quickly, just quickly. We were up very early. Sorry, we were about to start, but I just want to say something. We were up very early this morning, and I saw people. Oh, we were praying at the dam, and I saw people rushing because uh, either they didn't know the, the location or they weren't sure um, if Jesus was leaving them behind. But they were, they were going to be there. They came really, really fast. And it was, it was so amazing to see our church family meeting at this place in the morning. Everyone just praying for one another, loving one another, because our God rose, amen. And he loves us. And tell your neighbor, he loves you. And the person behind, he loves you. He loves you. Come on, we're going to praise God. Amen. You can clap a little bit like this. You know the song? You can sing this. You call my name.
know this is sick. The King of Glory.
risen. He didn't stay in the grave. He's alive. He's alive. Let's just give him one more shout of praise. can you can take a seat and then it was Sunday and the son of man who was broken for our stuff for our sin for what we did he took it on his body and he died so that we could have life so that we could be forgiven, so that we could have newness and fullness of life because of Him. Amen. I just want to read this verse from Ephesians 2. It says, Once you were dead, that's all of us, because of your disobedience and your many sins, you lived You used to live in sin, in darkness, church. We were in darkness. Like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. But then Sunday, but God is so rich in mercy and He loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, He gave us life when He raised Christ from the dead. And it is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For He raised us from the dead along with Christ. It wasn't just Jesus that was raised to life, it was us. We were given new life and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. And I just want to read the last part of this verse. For you are God's masterpiece. We are His work of art. Because of what Jesus did, we are His masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do good things He planned for us long ago. And you know, in this church, we have been, years doing God's work well, I lost my thing yeah, hold on. For, 12, for 12 years I'm just finding my, my thing I just wanted to tell you what the significance of 12 is I lost it so the significance of 12 in the Bible it's about governing authority the number 12 has two main significances it represents governing authority and completion or perfection. So think about the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 disciples. Um, Even now we have 12 months of the year. It represents completion in authority. And you know church where it says the end of that verse, we've been raised from the dead, we've been given life so we can do good works. And this church has been doing those good works for 12 years. And God is going to continue to do these good works. Everyone that's sitting in this place, if your life has been touched or changed, that's because of everybody else that has given to this ministry. And today, as we give into the, into the gospel, into extending God's kingdom to raise people from death to life, to give them the same that we have received, let's just remember that as we give and let's continue to give going forward faithfully and as God leads us because he's doing a good work in us and through us amen we're going to receive the offering I'm just going to pray let's just take out our offerings and we're going to pray 
Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the cross. And thank you for, uh, for being raised again to life and bringing us with you. You took us with you from death into life, into your glorious, amazing, wonderful life, full of grace and mercy and new things and goodness. And so we thank you that as we give into your work, this is your church, this is your body. And as we give into, into the church today, we thank you that you will use these finances and these gifts to extend your kingdom, to extend your grace and your mercy to more people that need you, to more people that are in darkness and need to be brought into the light, God. So we thank you for this now. Thank you for the privilege of knowing you and being called children of God. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for this now. In Jesus' name. How can you forgive me when I've often gone astray? How can you think of me when I do things my way? Turning my back on you, the one who loved me first, having my
Amen. Thank you so much, Cohen. That was amazing. Thank you, music team. Aren't they amazing? What a blessing. Thanks, guys. Welcome to Grace Place this morning, to everybody online. Welcome to everybody here. I know it's full. We're not going to be long, but it is a good day. And I'm very excited today, not only because it's our birthday, Birthday is, is significant because it means something new began. God gave new life. And I'm excited, not because of all the good things in my life. And let me tell you, there's a lot of good things in my life. I'm excited today because today is the day we celebrate the fact that Jesus has risen from the grave. Amen. And because of that, we have new life. Because of that, because of Jesus we have a future and we have a hope and we have a destiny and we know what that destiny is. Amen. Why don't you turn to the person next to you and tell them, Jesus loves you. You know, our theme for Easter this year is amazing love. Jesus loves you and he is here. So let me get into the sermon. I was told to be brief. <laughs> you know, um, a few months ago, we watched a reality show. You know, there's rubbish on TV. <laughs> really, like, but we watched the show and I think it was called Special Ops, Are You Strong Enough? Something like that. But it was about these, um, like, I suppose, well-known, better known and lesser known celebrities who participate in this thing where they have to compete and see if they're tough enough to join the elite forces. And it was really hard. And, um, you know, it was like, uh, I suppose like, almost has been, if you, I don't wanna be rude, but it made me think of all the stars, of all the, the famous people when I was young, in the 80s and the 90s, and I thought, what happened to these people? People like MC Hammer and Vanilla Ice, and I can feel my children rolling their eyes. <laughs> And uh, Hulk Hogan and Cindy Lauper, remember all those people? Like, what happened to them? What are they doing now? Where are they now? And literally a few days later, strangely, I was speaking to a young girl, and she asked that same question about Jesus. And she said, really bad things have happened in my life. Where is Jesus now? I believe in Jesus, but where is Jesus now? What is Jesus doing now? And you know, sadly, I do think it's a question that a lot of people ask nowadays. Where is Jesus now? But this morning, I want to encourage you. Jesus has never left you. Jesus is still on the throne. Jesus is not some has-been celebrity. Jesus is not a God that is far away, that doesn't really listen to you or hear you or know you. Jesus is very real. He's almighty God and he is with us. And he promised, he promised that he will be with us until the end of the age. Amen. So you can turn into your Bibles. This morning we're going to read from the book of Revelation. We're going to read from chapter one. So Revelation. So what happens, just a little bit of a background. John, the apostle John was exiled to the Isle of Patmos. And the Bible says he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And he hears a voice and the voice says, I am the Alpha, the Omega, I'm the beginning and the end. And this is a loud voice. And the voice tells John to write down the things that he sees. And he has, let's pick up from verse 12. So John says, when I turned to see who was speaking to me, I saw seven gold lampstands. And standing in the middle of the lampstands was someone like the Son of Man. He was wearing a long robe with a gold sash across his chest. And this is so beautiful. This describes Jesus. He was wearing a long robe with a gold slash, uh, sash across his chest. His head 
and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes were like flames of fire. Can you picture this? His feet were like polished bronze, refined in a furnace, and his voice thundered like mighty ocean waves. He held seven stars in his right hand, and a sharp two-edged sword came from his mouth, and his face was like the sun in all its brilliance. Now remember, John, who's writing and telling us this, this is the same John who knew Jesus very well. This is John the Beloved. This John was the John that at the Last Supper leaned against Jesus. This is the John that was at the foot of the cross when Jesus was being crucified. He knew Jesus very well, but this Jesus was awesome. This Jesus was not appearing as a suffering servant. This is the risen Lord. This is the King of Kings. This is the Lord. John says, when I saw him, even though I knew him, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as if I were dead. But he laid his right hand on me and he said, don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I died, but look, I'm alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and the grave. Write down what you have seen, both the things that are now happening and the things that will happen. This is amazing. Jesus is alive. He appears to John. Now, let's, let's think about this. Okay. When, John, when this happened, John was about 80 years old. He was not a young man. And about 60 years had passed since the resurrection of Jesus. 60 years of hardship, 60 years of persecution. The church was birthed and the church had grown, but it came at a cost, a very expensive cost. You see, God's grace is free, but it's not cheap. It came at a cost and one by one, the disciples and the early Christians were being persecuted and they were being mart martyred. And the first one to go was John's brother, James. About 10 years after Jesus was resurrected, James was beheaded. He was beheaded by Herod Agrippa. And about 20 years after that, the spokesman for the apostles, Peter, was crucified. He was crucified upside down by the emperor Nero. The other disciples of Jesus, if you go look in history, some were shot by arrows. Philip was hung. Bartholomew was flayed with knives, the, um, history tells us. That means he was skinned alive. It's a terrible death. Paul, he wasn't a disciple of Jesus, but he was an apostle. Paul was also beheaded. The early church was suffering in ways that we cannot imagine. And John, I'm sure John was also wondering, where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? What is Jesus doing? Where is Jesus when his people are suffering? Where is Jesus? And then the amazing thing, God shows John exactly where Jesus is. Jesus appears to John. And Jesus appears to John and he says, I haven't forgotten about my people. Jesus is still on the throne. Jesus is still alive. He still reigns. I mean, he's still the conqueror. So how amazing is it that we've read Jesus appears standing among seven golden lampstands. Why lampstands? So at the end of this chapter, Jesus explains that the seven lampstands represent the seven churches to whom John was supposed to write these letters. So Jesus appears amongst these seven golden lampstands. Lampstands? Lampstands, because churches are the light of the world. We are the light. Why are golden lampstands? Because the church, the congregation, is precious to Jesus. Our congregation is precious to Jesus. We belong to Jesus and we are important to Jesus. And you know what? We are a light. Today is our birthday. Yes. Thank you, Tash. That was such an amazing offering message. We are a light to the people around us. And Jesus is here. You know, the fact that Jesus stood among the lampstands means that he's keeping his promise to be with us until the end of his age, of the age. What is Jesus doing now, we can ask? He watches over us by standing in our midst. Jesus is here. He's standing in our midst. He's alive and he's standing in our midst. So I know 
Some of you may be experiencing hard times and storms this morning. And the storm that you've gone through, maybe it has taken away a loved one. Maybe it's taken away a spouse or a parent or a child and you are mourning that person. Maybe the storm has taken away your job and your security and you don't know what you're going to do next. Maybe you've been diagnosed with something terrible. Maybe you're in pain. Maybe you've been the victim of a crime or an injustice. But this morning I want to tell you the Jesus whom we serve, the Jesus who we belong to, he's here and he is with us. He is with us. He is with us right now. And we may feel all lost and all alone in the storms we face, but our God is alive forevermore and he holds the keys to death and hell. And I can't always tell you why you're going through a storm. But what I can tell you is this, you don't have to be afraid because Jesus is with you and nothing can separate us from his love. You know, the theme for our Easter is God's amazing love. Nothing can separate us from the love. Even if you feel, where is Jesus? Where is Jesus now? Nothing has separated you from his love. Let's read Romans 8. You can follow with me on the screen. The Bible says, what shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one. For God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one, for Christ Jesus died for us, and he was raised to life for us, and he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake we are killed every day, we are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory, not just victory, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Nothing can ever separate us. Say that to yourself. Nothing can ever separate me from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That love is revealed in Jesus, our risen Lord. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that wonderful? I am going to start closing. I told you I was going to be brief, eh? (laughs) But you see, we go through these hard times. We go through, like, you know, like John and the disciples, we, we feel abandoned. We feel alone. Where is Jesus? My life is upside down. Everything's a mess. Where is Jesus? What is Jesus doing now? You know what? Jesus is in your midst and he's telling you, I love you. I love you with an everlasting love. Do you know that God's silence is not God's absence? God's silence is not God's absence. You have to keep going. You can still believe because Jesus is alive. And sometimes God is silent because it's not the right time for him to intervene and to speak. But God's timing is always perfect. And God is always in control. When is God in control? Always. God is always in control, even when we feel things are out of control. And God will come and save you and show you how much he loves you. What is important for us is to keep believing, to keep living the way that God intended for us to live, to keep praying, to keep trusting, to keep serving, to keep going, to never give up because Jesus is alive and he loves us. For us as believers, we need to know that no amount of pain, and suffering can separate us from the love of God because Jesus is alive. Amen. No amount of pain and suffering can keep us away from God. And you know what? Suffering doesn't end in in, in the terrible things. Suffering actually ends in victory. 
Just get through it because Jesus is alive and he's our God. And I can say that because Jesus said, look, I was dead, but now I'm alive and I'm alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of death and hell. And that is why we are here this morning celebrating our risen Lord. And you know what? I know it's a quick message, but it's a true message. And this morning, if you can just take a moment just to bow your head and to close your eyes. This morning, I need you to know that you are precious to God. Our church, our family, everybody here, you are so precious to God. You're a golden lampstand to the Lord, and He is amongst us. I know we, you know, we're in an ordinary place, but when God is with us, it becomes extraordinary. And this morning, this is your chance. On today, Resurrection Sunday, this is the opportunity that you have to say. Jesus, I want to belong to you. I want to make you my Lord. I know you are risen. And sometimes, yes, I know, I don't know where you are. Sometimes I feel like you're so far away. But this morning, Jesus is in our midst. And he is here to save you. He is here to help you. So this morning, if this is you, if it's you that want to say, yes, I'm here, Jesus, you can just slip up your hand very quickly. This is the day for your salvation. And I know Jesus loves you. And I want you to never forget that the risen Lord is with us always. He was alive forever and ever. He's the God who was and is and is the God who is to come. Shall we all pray this prayer? If there's nobody here, let's just pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And we give our lives to you today, Lord. And every day we will follow in your steps. Our lives belong to you. Our hearts belong to you. Our destiny belongs to you. We look to you, our risen King. And we will serve you forever and ever. gave your life to the Lord and you didn't raise your hand uh, or you know you need to speak to somebody, please come see one of the pastors after church online. We welcome you. And if you uh, gave your life to the Lord today, you said that prayer, please get in touch with us. And uh, we really would like to help you on this path and journey that you've begun. And isn't it nice to have a wife that sort of, you know, listened and she was quick, you know? Uh, she didn't get me, you know, sometimes, you know, we tell stories about each other and things like that. Thank you very much. So how many of you after church are going to be Googling all these people from the years gone by? What's happened to them, you know? Who? I don't know who she was talking about, by the way. I don't know. So just a question quickly, because, yes, it is Resurrection Sunday, but it's also our birthday. Who has been at Grace Place for the last 10 to 12 years? Because we are 12 years old today. Just raise your hand. Just look around at the hands, even at the top. Isn't that amazing? You've walked this journey with us for the last 10 to 12 years. Why don't we give them a hand? And if you've walked this journey for the last month, we're so glad that you joined us. Wherever you joined this journey with us, we're so glad. And whatever you've done here, whatever part you've played, your prayers, your giving, Yes, it was an amazing offering, Natasha. Uh, everything that you've done has been a blessing to bless other people. And we want to just say thank you for that. So just, I wanted to give a short message, just very quickly, because it is our 12th birthday. And it's really, it's a few minutes, I promise. Okay, I'm not going to lie. But you know, Natasha mentioned what 12 is about, so that's why it's going to be even shorter. Thank you, Natasha. But you know that it was at the age of 12 that Jesus went missing and his parents couldn't find him. And then they went back to Jerusalem and found him preaching in the synagogue. There's a many, many, many numbers of 12 that represent different things, power and authority. But there was one thing that stood out for me, and I just wanted to share this for you because I believe it's a prophetic word for every single one of us here today. And I believe I need to share it with you today, and it's really simple. And I'm really going to ask you to try and grasp this because as a church, if we grasp this message, you'll see what God does for you in the rest of this year and moving forward. 
You know, the whole thing about our Amazing Love series is to see Jesus, to focus on Him, to focus on what He's doing. Even what Belinda spoke about this morning was to, where is He? He's right here. He's right with you. His presence is here. He has left the Holy Spirit to help us along this journey. So He has not left us. But I think often we have stopped looking to Him as the author and the finisher of our faith. We're looking to everything else. We're looking at our circumstances. So I just want to read the scripture to you. And funny, I did pray it this morning and we were at the prayer. We had an amazing time at the dam. We had about 60 people come and pray. It's more than double is what we normally have. So, so that was amazing. We had a great time, time there. And uh, I just want to read from Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8 speaks about the woman having a flow of blood. And this woman, how many years are we at Grace Place for? 12 years, right? This woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. Here's a story about 12. She had spent all her livelihood in physicians and could not be healed by any. She came from behind and touched the border of the garment of Jesus, and immediately her flow of blood stopped. Jesus said, who touched me? And when all denied it, she was scared because she wasn't supposed to be out in any case. Peter said to him, Master, the multitudes are thronging and pressing you, and you say, who touched me? But Jesus said, somebody touched me because I perceived power going out from me. This woman had been looking all over for her healing for 12 years. She looked at her circumstances, probably thought, I will never be healed, but I'll go and see every doctor I can think of. I'll go and see a herbalist. I'll go and see whatever it is and whoever it is to see to, for, for me to be healed. For 12 long years, for those of you who have been here for 12 years, it's a long period of time. But for 12 years, she looked and she found nothing. And then all of a sudden, one day her gaze shifted. She shifted from looking at her circumstances and on the problems that she had, and she looked to Jesus. And on that day when she looked to Jesus and she reached out and touched Him, she found healing. On that day. I think for many of us, we're looking all over the show for the things that we need. Belinda spoke about the lost ones, the loved ones that we have lost, the, the things that we've gone through in life, a loss of a job, all those things that, that, have, that we may struggle with, the questions as to why am I not healed? Why, why am I still going through what I'm going through? But you know that when we begin to focus solely on Jesus, like this woman did, He will dictate our future. When we're looking at the circumstances, which far too often we've done, I am guilty of that. When we're looking at the circumstances, oh, I don't know how I'm going to make it at the end of the, oh, I don't know, I'm feeling sick, I don't know how I'm going to be healed. I don't know how I'm going to get through the loss of this loved one that I'm mourning. If we look at those situations and those circumstances, we are going to be led by them. This is a message for us, church. We're going to be led by what we're looking at. And what God is saying to us today is if we'll just look to Jesus, He will be the one that will lead us to the path of life. All these other things will take us down a path of depression. It'll take us down a path of further sickness. It'll take us down a path where we doubt what God has done in our lives. And so we have a choice today. We have a decision to make, and it ties in with Belinda's message today. If you would just sh shift your focus from what's happening and shift it onto Jesus. Now that's not Jesus, but that's just a, a representation. But if we just shift our focus, things will begin to change. Our destiny will begin to change. The things that you've been worrying about, all of a sudden you're gonna go, wow, I can't believe what God has done in my life. Where there was lack, all of a sudden there is provision. Where there's been sickness, all of a sudden there is healing. In every single area of life, it'll be there. But church, we need to do something and keep our eyes on Him. Let's not doubt Him for one minute. When we shift our view onto our circumstances, we will be guided by them. But when we shift our view onto Jesus, we will be guided by Him. Who do you want to be guided by? I know that the life we're living now is a walk of faith and we decide to walk. You know, when Peter walked on the water, it was a walk of faith. He walked on water, he took his eyes off Jesus and he sank. What an easy lesson, isn't it? When we take our eyes off Jesus, we will sink. And so this year, for our 12th year, as we exalt God, do you know that as we lift Him up and we humble ourselves before Him, He will lift us up. He will take you from glory to glory. 
He will take you from one level to the next. But the only way we're going to get to the next level is when we're looking to Jesus. That's the only way we take the next step. And so that's my message for you, just for 12 years. Very quick, simple. I just believe it's something that God wants us all to hear because you watch and see what happens by the end of this year. Not even by, it's even happening now. God is doing a new thing right now. I know we hear these things sometimes, but I really feel it. I've experienced it. We've experienced it. We're seeing what God is doing. And as much as the enemy will attack, it doesn't matter because God is faithful. He is true. He is real. And you'll see good things happening in your life this year. So focus on Jesus and not on the other things. Go from glory to glory. Go from faith to faith and from strength to strength. Amen, church. Are you ready for what God is going to do? Because I'm ready and I'm seeing it ready in people's lives. Enough is enough. Some of you have been groveling for too long. It's enough. It's time to stand up and get out of that place. And you know exactly what you need to do. Look to Jesus. He will lead you. He will guide you. Amen. Amen. Well, it's our birthday. In fact, no, in fact, it's our birthday. <laughs> I was going to say something, but I'm going to leave that for, for, for a moment. You know, at a birthday, there's always certain things that we want to celebrate. And we wanted to announce this, this this week. It's just something special that we want to do. You know, we we have our sister churches, Grace Place Early Funds Fontaine and Grace Place Zerust. And we've thrown a lot into those churches as Grace Place International here, GPI. And uh, we... Uh, just, I just want to mention one or two things, you know, you're going to notice that from next week that some of the people from Grace Place Early Funds Fontaine will be joining us here on Sunday because they don't have a place to worship at this point. Every, all the doors have been shut, but we have an idea, Pastor Verge, we're going to go out this week and we have one last idea. And uh, uh, what we need to do is we're going to go back to the school that we're at and ask if we can put up a tent again. The tent that was there, disintegrated, finished, blew away, is gone. And then uh, GPZ, uh, their covering, they had this tarp that they were meeting under, has blown away, disintegrated, and is gone. And so we are going to be getting them a tent as well, uh, just so that we can, they can have a place to fellowship. If anybody has any contacts, I know there are one or two people we have spoken to, just let us know, um, but we will be getting that in the next week or two. So we know that as these things happen, it's because of your giving, your faithfulness, your prayers that these things happen, because God is touching lives in our other churches. He's really touching lives. They're doing a great work among the people that are there. And so one of the things we're going to be doing this year in May, it's on the, on the weekend after Mother's Day. The weekend after Mother's Day. Uh, da, 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 there it is. You can, go to the, you can go to the information desk if you're interested in this, and you can get some more information on it. We have got Project Wonder that we're going to start this year. And basically what it is is we're bringing about 25 children from Zerust who have never left Zerust, they have never seen a large city, they've never seen a zoo, they've never seen a movie, they've never seen an escalator, moving stairs, those kinds of things. And we're bringing 25 children from the church at Zerust for the day, Saturday morning, the week after Mother's Day. They're going to come here and we're going to be asking you, Grace Place, to adopt a child in a way for the day. And if you are interested in that and you want to get involved, all it will be is meeting kids at the zoo, and all the details are here. You'll spend time with your child at the zoo. I have an adopted child already. Where's Luca? He's my new son. Just so you all know, this is the word that's spreading around. So I'll take you. Okay. Have you been to the zoo? You have? Uh, no, don't worry. Uh, 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 you know. So we'll meet them at the zoo. And then as the family that you're going to look after, or the kid or two that you're going to look after, you'll we'll have a picnic late in the morning. And from there, the bus will take them to movies. You'll go and spend the afternoon with, with them at movies. And then they're going to be at Carter's house for that evening. So you won't have to keep them at your home overnight. We'd rather keep them in one place at Carter's house, all 25 children. And then the next morning, they're going to come to church. They're going to sing and dance because they're preparing something for us. The younger ones will go to Grace Kids. The older ones will come here to church and then they'll be going back to Zeros. So if you want to get involved, maybe you want to actually look after a child. There are certain pre uh, uh, requirements that are needed. Go and have a look there. If you want to uh, take a child now, there are forms you can take who they are. We've put the ages of the children there, what we want you to get for them, to help them. 
because many of them come from very uh, needy families. Uh, then if you can't actually look after a, child, after a child, but you want to give, you want to give towards the transport or the hampers we want to send back to them or the station we want to give them, the clothing we want to give them, the sweets, the toys, all those things that we want to do, all these things are available at the info desk. If we run out of forms, we will email you. So just give your email address. So I don't know if you're excited about that. We're very excited about that. Just, just allowing ch children just to see things that we just take for granted. And so if you want to be involved, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to have too many people involved, if you don't make the list because you got there too late, we will do another one. Don't worry. There are more. Okay. So uh, let's get ready for those good things that are coming up. And uh, I'm really excited to see what God is going to do this year. 12 years of grace. Uh, I think it was Jay and uh, Kim that were asking me, can you believe it's 12 years? And I said, you know, there's times I look back and I go, what have we done? And there's times I look back and go, wow, look at what's happened at Grace Place. And we're just so grateful to God for all that He has done. I can go right back to our first service, which happened next door. And just, I still remember how we felt. I still remember how I wanted to run away, but there was no escape route. I was so scared. I just wanted to run. I thought, how do I get out of here? But I was stuck in the office at the back. And I couldn't run. If I ran, I was going to run past everybody. And I just heard the noise getting louder and louder. And I thought, what's going on? Why are there so many people here? And uh, God has just done great things. And we just trust that as, as, as we go on through the years, that we all remain humble, that we all remain teachable and hear from God and let Him lead every single one of us to where we are supposed to be. And we're so grateful that you've been on this journey with us, church. We're going to be praying over you in just a moment. I've asked Pastor Virgin, Pastor Tracy, if they'll do that. Um, and uh, uh, I just want to say thank you, Grace Place, both Belinda and I, from the bottom of our hearts for everything that you've done and all the things that you mean to us. Um, amazing. So, because I cry too much, I'm not crying today. Okay, it's my hobby, I've told you. From a guy who never cried, I couldn't actually cry. You know, you stand there and go, oh, I'm gonna cry, oh, make yourself cry. Doesn't happen, but now it just happens automatically. Okay, I look good, don't I, <laughs> when I cry. We have a cake that's been given by the Cake Brothers. They're sitting just over there. We're gonna see one of the Cake Brothers now. And uh, I'm gonna call them up in just a moment. Well, Mel come up in any case, but we're gonna pray. We're gonna cut this cake and we're going to pray over the church in just a moment. But before we do that, we've had people that baked cakes for us. And I'm going to call them up also in a moment just to thank them and just give them something small. But as you can see here, here are the three top cakes that have come first, second, and third with your votes. So what we do now, because man, you know, you know when politics entered Grace Place? Can I tell you when politics entered Grace Place? Was at our first, second, third, fourth, and so on, Bake Off. We can tell you stories. At one of the bake-offs, one of the, the person, did you see somebody was handing out the tickets, right, at the door? That person a couple of years ago who was handing out the tickets decided to put the rest of the tickets in her family member's box. Yes. And there were like, honestly, it wasn't a bad, but there were amazing cakes. I think some people got offended and have never baked again. I understand why. This cake that was not... Even it was a one out of 10 compared to the others. I'm just saying, you know, um, on that day, okay, one. And we were all shocked and we couldn't understand. And we did some investigation and that's what happened. And then years later, other things happened where people who had a cake would call people, that's my cake, vote for my cake. People stood behind the cakes, it's my cake. And if you didn't vote for it, you felt bad because now how do you not vote for someone who's asking you to vote for their cake? Even though you know the one next to it is much better. And so we've had politics. So we're trying not to have politics anymore with this cake bake off. We will not let it go. We will not give up. We will carry on with this cake bake. Right? Because it's fun, isn't it? Did you see the leaning tower of cake? It's my wife. Okay. It's not here. <laughs> I said to her yesterday, just take a picture of it so if it does fall over, people at least can see what it was. <laughs> so we put a spoon up there to try and keep it from falling over. There's about a hundred skewers in there as well. So it didn't help. So just be careful when you cut. I'm sure you've seen it, Charmaine. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, so we've had lots of fun. And you know, Melinda and Jamie have entered every year for the last 12 years, and they came top three last year. So keep trying, don't give up. And uh, when you want to win, just come and speak to me. Okay, I have all the tickets. <laughs> we'll print more tickets, you know, in the background, and uh, we'll get it done. So I'd like to ask, we've asked three people to taste. Uh, one of the Cake Brothers, will you start coming up here so long? Cake brother number one, <laughs> Malcolm, shame he is. Uh, we need to pray for Malcolm. I would also like to ask Justin. Justin, they have a bakery in Sabenza. If you want to go and get good cake, they have a bak ba bakery with a factory shop there. Um, and uh, you can go and find it there in Sabenza. And then one of our young guys, Aaron. Aaron, why don't you come to the front as well? So we're going to ask the three of you, if you'll just come and maybe come stand this side so everyone can see you eating the cake. Thank you, Aaron. Pastor Brandon and Jay's son. So there are three slices of cake here. There are three cakes. And you all need to taste a piece of each. Uh, if you don't mind, don't just taste one because then you're going to vote for that one. So if you just grab your forks, you've each got one. And then each cake is numbered, one, two, three. If you would just choose and write on that piece of paper which cake you think is the best, don't show anyone. Just give the piece of paper to Kyle and then we will announce the winner in no time. But while they're tasting, because I know it's awkward being watched eating cake, I'm going to ask Pastor Virgin, and Pastor Tracy if they'll come over to this cake. I want to thank the Cake Brothers again for this, this cake while they're tasting over there. Um, happy birthday. If you come close, you'll see that there are waves. Look at this wall over here. Are waves, whatever may be crashing down on us. Waves here. Waves. There is clouds. It's not candy floss, so don't eat it. Clouds. And then over here, we see the picture of what's up there. But it's the risen Lord, our Savior, who has risen from the dead. And so that just represents our theme for this year and also for our 12th birthday. So thank you so much, Cake Brothers. Let's give them a hand for this cake. So I'm going to ask Pastor V and Pastor T if they will please. Uh, that's got a ring to it, actually. After 12 years, <laughs> if you'll pray over Grace Place. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, before we pray, can you pray about Pastor, Pastor Mark and Belinda and your children? Amen, guys. Amen, guys. Let's just stretch our hands out to our pastors, guys. Father God, we just want to thank you for Pastor Mark and Belinda and Jamie and, and their family, Father God. Lord, we just thank you, God, for the leadership team that they've been to raise this ministry, Father God, for 12 years. God, I thank you for the wisdom and the knowledge you've blessed them with. God, may we continue to do that, God. As we celebrate Resurrection Sunday, Father God, may they rise above everything that they've gone through for the last 12 years, God, that you bless them, that they can continue to lead this ministry in the way you want it to go, Father God. And I thank you. For the team that's behind them, God, that they will continue to support them in every way, Father God, that this ministry will never fail, but continue to work to you, that they, we, will comp, comp, we will preach the uncompromised word in every area, Father, in all the ministries that we do have, Father God, knowing that you, our Heavenly Father, has led us into these areas, mighty God. I also thank you for our praise and worship team that we blessed with, Father God. And I thank you for the various ministries that we also have, Father God, that we also make a difference in the Inbell area, Father God, that we are a church that is like, has a lamp on the hill, Father God, that everybody around this area will come and feel the amazing love that we at Christ Place have, Father God. And once again, I thank you for this family, Father God, that they will work with you, Father God, and that you will show them the way that Christ Place will go through. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sorry, we, we're going to continue our prayer. <laughs> I, wa I want everyone to, to stand because I'm sorry. This ministry, I'm going to say, Grace Place Ministry belongs to Jesus. It is in the palm of our Father's hand. And every evil work 
that Satan has planned and is even doing against this ministry and against every person, child of God, who belongs to Grace Place Ministry will be brought to naught in the name of Jesus. And so we pray and we declare and we come against you, Satan, with the power of the name and the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we say you will desist in your maneuvers against this ministry and against every individual who belongs to this ministry in the name of Jesus. I declare your works null and void. I curse the crops of your evil work and your evil words that have been spoken against individuals and against this ministry ministry in the name of Jesus and we thank you Father that you Jesus are glorified in our midst your plans your purposes and your pursuits God come to pass for Grace Place Ministry for Pastor Mark for Pastor Belinda their family and every one of us who has put our hands to the plow at this ministry your plans Father come to pass in Jesus' name and we give you Jesus all glory and honor amen Let's just pray for Malcolm over here. Father, we pray for Malcolm. Lord, you know what's happening in his body, what the doctors have said, but Lord, we believe your report. And Father, I pray that he will walk properly and normally again, that the things that are attacking his body right now will come to nothing in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we know you're a God who heals, and right now as I lay my hands on him, I pray for healing in his life. I pray for healing in every member of his family's lives, Lord. Every single one of them, that they walk in health, Father. And as they focus on you and on no one else, Lord, that they will see the victory, they will see their healing. So, Lord, right now, just anoint them, anoint him. May your healing flow like warm oil. In Jesus' mighty name. God is good. Amen. You can be seated just for a moment. Can I ask, and we're nearly, we're nearly there. Everyone that baked a cake, I know some people cancelled at the last minute, but those of you who brought a cake, won't you come to the front? And those of you whose cake is here, won't you come stand behind it? We have our auditors who are busy counting the votes. Sue and Irene, and co and uh, do you have the results for me just give me the winner why isn't it an envelope because now it's probably been there's been cheatings going on here So those of you who baked a cake, just come stand and face. We just want to give you something as well. But who else baked cakes? There were more than that. Jamie, you need to come here. She baked the one next to the leaning tower. <laughs> Anybody else? Is this? Okay, so we do have something we'd like to give each of you before you leave. We've just got some uh, a present. Balins, you're going to have to, even though you baked a cake, let me just get this bag here. Just to say thank you to everyone inside, there is something small for you all. Why don't we give them all a round of applause? All right. You see what you get if you bake a cake? Chocolate. And thank you to the tasters. Thank you for telling us who you thought was the best tasting cake. So, we have the top three here, and uh, I've just got this. Thank you, Sunarain and Co. And the, you can sit, yes, thank you. And the winning cake is the winning number, and I think for a second year in a row, is cake number one. Well done, Sylvia. <laughs> There is a trophy. <laughs> Thank you so much. The other cakes, you were, you were really.
close in the running. Well done. You will never know if you really were that close, but I've got the figures here. But, uh, you know, a chocolate might get you the scores. I don't know. Um, but thank you so much, uh, The Winning Cake. Thank you for uh, sharing your talents with us. I think they all should have won, just so you know. But you are all winners, shall we say that? <laughs> so Grace Place, we have cake, tea, coffee, cappuccino. There's all in the foyer. It is our birthday. Uh, we've kept it really low-key this year, um, but it's also Resurrection Sunday. So please go and have cake. Uh, um, it is there. It'll all be cut, and uh, you're welcome to have a piece. And I think the biggest thing is just have fellowship with one another. I believe that's where we're going to go to the next level at Grace Place this year. So you're blessed. Are you glad you came? I am too. We got a great message from my wife. Thank you very much. And let's just stand and close in prayer. Father, we thank you that we are here and that as we leave, we leave fellowshipping with one another, loving one another, being who you are to us, Lord. We want to be more like you, Jesus. And so, Lord, we follow after you this week. And Lord, as we celebrate Easter, as we have this long weekend and as we celebrate Grace Place's birthday, Lord, we look forward to the great things that you're going to do in the next years to come. But Lord, I pray a blessing over every person in this place everyone that's watching online, everyone that couldn't make it today, I pray your protection around them, your blessing upon them, and that we'll all move forward in the way that you want us to go. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you all.